Hello and welcome to episode 27 of Illuminating Rounds. Martin, welcome. How are you doing? Uh, absolutely brilliant. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, and looking forward to talking about Dinant. Yes, we, we have had a good time and we played the first, I keep saying the first day, but it's not the first day because the first day is actually the morning. So we played the first morning of the campaign. Yeah. How, how do you think it's going? Well, do you know what? It's been uh, uh, yeah, a roller coaster is the uh, is the cliche, isn't it? It's been yeah. a real emotional roller coaster. So I think I've I've gone from it looking um, really really tough to thinking it will be all right. But yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's been big big ups and downs. Exactly, and and I think my my feelings have been exactly mirrored on yours. So it's always going okay to start with. Feel like it's uh, it's a bit tough on the French now. So as yeah. as you know, I'm playing the French. You're playing the Germans. Yes. Um, we're going to take you through um, the setup, and then we'll skip through to the end of the first day. And mm-hmm. fingers crossed, we're going to get Dan on to give us his thoughts about where we've got to so far. Uh, yes. So we'll see how that goes. Um, before we do any of that, uh, we have to thank one of our patrons. Mm-hmm. So we have a new patron, um, and that's Mike Grogan. So Mike, thank you very much. We really Thanks, appreciate Mike. your patronage. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I was saying earlier on, you know, there is times are a bit tough for everybody right now, and. The fact that we still have lots of support from all of the community, it's it's amazing. So thank you, everybody, to for all that. Um, we're having a great time with the tournament. Uh, the tournament is nearly complete for round one. Um, Martin, we're going to go through all the um, all the log files from all the games, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, well, who who would who would not like do a log file for a game like that when they've been asked specifically? Ridiculous, isn't I it? I can't believe it. Unless unless they had something to hide, maybe I don't know. I don't know how your game went. We'll find out later on. <laughs> I was the one person who hasn't done a log file, right? So, so, so when I'm going to play ASL, I'm excited, okay? And I always forget to to get it going at the beginning beginning of the game. So, so it completely went out of my my head. I can talk right. about the game and how how Jerry absolutely smashed me to pieces, but <laughs> I can't show it. I can't show you it happening, unfortunately. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, if a tree falls in the woods, you know, we still. We heard, we heard the defeat from all over here. That's... Exactly. He was crying. He was so sad. I, we, we, I, I said to him, don't worry, we'll say you won. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we started Denon, didn't we? And we've played the first yes. campaign game, the morning of the 13th. Um, so you've said it's tough for the Germans to start with. I think it's tough for the French to finish up with. It was horrifically tough, it felt, at the beginning for the Germans. But um, but yeah, by, by the end, there's there's... It seems to kind of got better, didn't it? Yeah, for, and for the Germans and worse it, for you. It did, and and that's the thing is, it feels like um a snowball, kind of getting gaining momentum as it comes down the hill. It's really really interesting because it's there's wave after wave of Germans, isn't it? We might only be two or three squads make it the first the first time, and you can probably deal with them. But while you're busy dealing with them, more are coming across, and it exactly gradually gains momentum doesn't it it's uh, it's fascinating exactly so if we take a look at the setup so this is this is how we set up um i purchased the oba and i purchased a heavy weapons company um yeah. and some uh, fortification points mm-hmm. um, so basically um I, I guess i don't know how much of a standard setup this is i mean i'll zoom in and just give everyone a kind of uh a kind of glimpse at what it looked like so i'm obviously the french on the left hand side here Mm. Um, there's, I, I, I guess, I was a bit nervous about the bombardment. That bombardment is pretty brutal. Um, you can see where you brought it down with your um, your AR here. Um, it, the the trial game that we started, you brought it down in the south yeah. and hit hard in the south and absolutely destroyed most of the guys. The here. Was, buildings, didn't it? Killed several squads. It's brutal. Um, this time you brought it in the center. And you've pushed in half of the centre. And it was very um, ineffective, though, wasn't it? The, this this particular time. You had terrible luck with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think I think you got some you got some shell holes, and, and that's pretty much all you got. I think you might yeah. have, you might have found some hips as well, but uh, some um, uh, some dummies. Mm. But that was interesting because because my initial idea about cross, about crossing this river was that I would cross in that way with everybody together in a long line, and 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 go across. And you weren't sure. I'm not sure that that was the right thing to do, but I remember you pointing out halfway through that I've still got to get through these these buildings on both sides. So you've got like a hard flank to me, haven't you, on both right. sides, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but the idea was like to try and guarantee I could get across and try and push you away from where I'm eventually going to put ferries right. and bridges. That was kind of my longer term strategy. 
And I, I took a look. I took a look at the map and thought, well, if you come across the centre, I don't know yeah. what you're going to do now. If you yeah. do start, because you've got to start, you know, climbing cliffs, and it's very difficult. And you know, there's obviously some <clears throat> support weapons that can can kind of guard this um, this area across the like the open ground yeah. um, along that. Uh, uh, is that the II Road? I'm not sure if that's yeah II Road. Um, yeah, which looks quite treacherous to get past. So yes. I was kind of thinking, well, okay, I'm quite happy for you to cross in the centre. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and who knows who's right? You know, yeah. that's uh, this. That's the strategy I've gone. I've gone for. I was kind of nervous of because I think the alternative is to attack in the north and the south simultaneously. Right. And I was anxious there that I might kind of end up finding myself or losing both or, uh, right. or or whatever. This way, I thought I'll, I'll get across the river in that first game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the game date in the morning and um you know with luck next time i can start building ferries and i can start building bridges that's the, right, right. That, that's the thinking behind it so should we fast forward to the end so, of the first day yeah um so let's um hmm. okay so if we if we look at the how how the uh the end of the campaign uh scenario played out so this is the end of the morning of the 13th um, you've made some progress. You definitely Absolutely. made some progress. So, what happened? Um, you pushed hard. You've got across uh, in the centre. Yeah. Uh, you've made it across with um, points of infantry. Twenty-nine points. Yeah, is what you've got across. And yeah. the big, the big thing here was you've got across up the. You scaled up the cliff. Uh, yes. And you managed to get a squad and a half up. I was very proud of that. In fact, we got the rules wrong, didn't we? Because I think we thought that it was one level. That's so I right. spelled it very quickly. In fact, it's two because you, right. you got that brown round like DD20, which was really good. So, yeah, so I cheated missed. to get them up there. But um, we. But that's um, all that went wrong in this. I thought I was being very clever doing that. and um, But actually, they're, 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 they're kind of in trouble up there, aren't they? Now? They are now because, because yeah. the French get the first turn in the mm. second scenario because they have to buy the attack chip. Um, yeah. I have a chance to try and clear that off. That's and right. I feel like that's that's a must have. If, if I think the the question here is so so you know that there's a half squad here and you know that um, there's just two crews and, and obviously I yeah. know that's a squad yeah. therefore squad. Um, yeah. The uh, the issue here is that if I lose that melee, um, I'm in all sorts of trouble really to try and stop yes. like what is a quite a sizable German force coming across here in the middle. Yes. Um, yeah. So it's it's looking a little bit sketchy there for me. Yeah. Um, it does so i started pulling back i've started pulling back my northern troops um to try to uh bring back i've made my purchases up but i can't tell you yet what they are because you haven't made yours i have to make mine at the start uh and i do them a little bit earlier obviously i'm kind of keeping the south um hidden just because i don't want anyone to to be revealed down here and i need to still protect this because in theory you can still come in down here a huge number of dummies don't you so it's um yeah. it, everything looks much stronger than it perhaps is that's Obviously, right I don't know which are dummies and which aren't but that's um, right yeah now, have you been keeping track i think i've purchased I a turn in that southern town fighting dummies uh, i think i they got all the prep fire and things like that that's then... right yeah you did you did get some dummies up in ll38 from the yeah. um, yeah. stack here my um i mean you can see from that decimated um kill stacks that you've got here you know in PP38. There's yes. four heavy machine, or three heavy machine guns, and one medium machine gun, and one crew. <laughs> yeah, that's thanks to the OBA, um, largely. That has been absolutely brutal. I mean, I suppose the, the the answer is that perhaps I shouldn't have those big kill stacks, um, but it seemed it, it seemed the only way to guarantee kind of breaking your your defenders and making right. it possible for the assault groups to get across. So that'd be interesting. I'm not sure how I'd play that differently. Yeah. I think it would have helped if I'd had OBA as well. Yeah, yeah. I could have been bringing that down and, um, you know, taking some of these, some of your guys out because both of my radios malfunctioned and then disabled, didn't they, without coming down? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think that's quite, that was quite impactful, especially as you, your OBA has been very effective. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, maybe it was a mistake having them like that. I mean, perhaps the thing would be to spread them out. Um, yeah, you know, can still potentially form fire groups, can't they? Right, and, right. And, you know, with, albeit without leadership. Yeah, exactly. So let's see what um, we're going to have a quick chat, with Dan, and see what Dan thinks of um, of the first scenario. Um, yeah. And we'll catch back up after after that. So I was I was just saying I, I mean, I'll welcome you to the to the video first, Dan, because 
thank you for, oh, okay. for taking uh, taking your time out to take a look at, at where we go. Yeah, I, I didn't. You were just telling us a, a quick story about you joining potentially joining the Marines. Do you want to do you want to tell us that story or? Yeah, I, I, I was driving around one day with my cousin Dave, and I just decided that I was going to join the Marine Corps, and uh, it was quite the uh, experience. I went down to the recruiting depot in West New York, and uh, I walked into the office, and the guy was like, sergeant that was in there, he's, he's, he was like, couldn't believe that I wanted to join the Marine Corps. He was just, you know, said, you're not really Marine Corps material. <laughs> I had hair down to the middle of my back and tucked into my belt at the time. I weighed like 295 pounds. Right. It was like 6'3". I was a big guy. I was playing ball and all that. But the drill stretcher, they, you know, when I got off the plane, they, they sent me down to this place in Newark, AFES. And they have this set up in AFES. It's a whole block. It's a federal building down in Newark. And... They have the chairs in the room in like an X, in four sections. And over each section, they have signs that Air Force, Navy, Army, Marine Corps. This was 1970, right in the middle of the Vietnam War. So I walk into this room and I see the sign Marine Corps over there. And it's like a couple of guys standing around talking. So I walk over. I'm looking in the room and the Army section is filled with people. All the chairs are full, people sitting on the floor. The Navy section's got about 25 guys in it. The Air Force section's got like 30, 40 people in it. Marine Corps section's got six of us. So <laughs> this master gunnery sergeant comes walking out. And he goes, you see all those sons of bitches over there? They ain't none of them worth them. You guys, one of you might be worth something, but the rest of you are all just, you know. <laughs> so he looked at me, he goes, oh, sweetheart. He goes, you come with me. <laughs> He hands me this envelope. He says, these are the orders for all these guys out there. He says, make sure they all get down to Paris Island. All right, so they drive us down to the airport. They put us on a plane. Plane lands in Washington. We got like an hour between flights. Everybody splits and goes to get something to eat. I was standing there with the stewardess wait, waiting for everybody to get back on a plane. Five people come back. You know, I'm like, where's the other guy? He's like, I don't know. We didn't tell you. you know, he went off somewhere. So the stewardess is going, we have to close the door, sir. I said, no, the other guy's got to come back. You know? said, no, no, we're closing the door. If you don't get on, you know, you're not on the plane. This was before 9-11, so let me on the plane. You get on the plane, the other guy's not there. I'm sitting in the back of the plane. I'm just like, oh, my God, what this, you know, what is this going to do? So I figured, well, what can they say? It's not me. I didn't do anything. So plane lands. I go to get off the plane. Wind hits my hair, blows up in the air, and I'm Drill instructor stands at the bottom of the ramp. He goes, oh, sweetheart, come down here to me. <laughs> he goes, you got the orders. Yeah, I got the orders. He says, stand up. He goes, where's the other guy? So he never got back on a plane to Washington. He goes, he grabs me by the ear and just drags me across the tarmac to the bus. He goes, you sit right here in the bus. Second seat in the bus right behind him. And he's just glaring at me with this like weird eye. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to Paris Island and they do the night time thing they bring you in at like 2 o'clock in the morning so everybody falls asleep on a bus you know because you've been up since like 6 so they jump everybody's jumping off the bus and it had these yellow footprints right outside the bus you have to stand on and uh, they take me and they put me right up in the front and they go you come with me and they bring me into this room and they take a picture of me like a mugshot standing there with my hair down then the guy says, sit down in the chair, and this guy comes over and just shaves my head in like three seconds. I mean, he just said, if you have any moles on the top of your head, put your fingers on them so I don't cut them off. <laughs> <laughs> he went from, I went from like hair to no hair in like three seconds. It was one of the most traumatic things that ever happened to me in my life. <laughs> These guys just for the rest of the night. They dragged me around. I was to fire watch. They, got, they give you like an hour to sleep, so they have a fire watch. So I was the fire watch guy, of course. So I'm walking around with this flashlight. This one guy gets up to go to the bathroom. And they come out throwing the garbage cans and screaming and yelling and, you know, going through the Marine Corps thing. And the guy never come back out of the bathroom. So he's like, 
the, the guy goes, where's, where's this guy? He says, I don't know. He got up and went to the bathroom. He says, you lost another fucking guy? <laughs> so now the guy, they grab me by the throat now. He's got me by the throat. And he's just like walking me into the bathroom. Now lays the guy on the floor in the corner with his wrist slit. <laughs> so these guys down, I swear to God. The one guy runs over to call an ambulance, and the other guy goes over to this guy and grabs him by the chest and picks him up and stands him up. He goes, jumping jacks until the ambulance gets here. He goes, what? <laughs> he goes, jumping jacks. What's a jumping jack? You jump like this, and you're flailing. So the guy's like bleeding out of his wrist, and he goes, I'm bleeding. The guy goes, you did that to yourself. You're trying to exercise <laughs> until the freaking ambulance gets here. <laughs> Wow. That was my introduction to Paris Island. You know? Wow. After, after that, it was a lot calmer. I ended up in Hawaii for two years, making sure the Japanese didn't come back. Okay. Mm -hmm. You did a good job. It was you an know, interesting time. I, I spent most of my time. They, they, I went uh, from boot camp. I went to infantry training. And from there, I went out to radio school in San Diego. Then to 29 Palms up in the desert. And mm. uh, I met a guy up there that had the same name, but he was a sergeant and I was a Lance Corporal. When I arrived at the base, I got a pay raise from $73 <laughs> every two weeks to $129 every two weeks. <laughs> I couldn't understand that. I thought it was desert pay for being in this hellhole. Right. And I met him. I was up in the general's building one day, delivering some papers. And I'm walking down the hall. I see this guy in his office with a nameplate, Daniel F. Dolan. Hey. Right. Is that your name? He goes, whose name are you thinking of me? You got the same name. What's your middle name? He goes, Francis. What's it to you? Uh, my name's Francis, too. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. He goes, how much you getting paid? Oh, this is uh, 127 every two weeks. I said, I got pay raise when I got here. He goes, yeah, you got my pay raise. <laughs> so I started getting his checks. I had to go down and straighten it out with dispersing. And then he told me he was the orders clerk. If you get me orders out of there. So I was like, oh, that's cool. He goes, $75 it'll cost you. I said, what the hell, it's your money. You know, I give him $75. So two days later, the lieutenant that I was with tells me, you got orders stolen. I said, oh, really, sir? I just got here. He says, oh, no. He says, you're going to Force Recon in Saigon. I said, what? <laughs> Force Recon? No, I'm a radio operator. I don't want to go to Force Recon. Well, that's where you're headed, so. I went home on leave for 30 days. I went back and they red tagged me because the Marines were pulling out at that time. You know, they were all leaving. The Army was there. And uh, they red tagged me in Okinawa. So I picked up cigarette butts for two weeks. And then they sent me to Hawaii to a, a communications company in Hawaii. I'd just come back from Vietnam. And uh, they were all leaving. So I was like the only, I was the new guy, but. Mm. In two weeks, I was the old guy because they all got discharged, you know. Right. But uh, after that, I got hooked up with this deal where I worked as a driver's school on the base. Everybody had to, wanted to get a license, had to go to driver's school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just went with this gunnery sergeant from Kentucky that uh, has name, rank, and serial number tattooed on his arm so he could remember it. <laughs> <laughs> It was uh, an interesting two years with him, yeah, like driving that. 30 miles an hour up up and down the north shore of Oahu, wow. one of the most beautiful land in the world. Yeah, it's that's that quite a, it's quite the quite the career there. Fun experience. Yeah, was quite quite the you know all these people say, oh, you're a marine. Oh yeah, I was a marine. You know, <laughs> driving that jeep at 30 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, that sounds. Uh, I mean, it was a tough time to enlist, I guess. So, I mean, that's a. a well, it was, you know, it was. Uh, I I did my part. I, yeah. you know, I got my veterans card now. I get 20 percent off of everything. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty yeah. good. You deserve it. You yeah. Deserve yeah. It. Did you get 20 percent off the norm? That's the. <laughs> the credit yeah, yeah, they did. I did get twenty percent off at the <laughs> Good. <laughs> Brian was very happy to give me the twenty percent off. Brilliant, brilliant. So you can see we got to the end of uh, end of the first. Yeah, day you here. got across in the middle pretty good. It looks like. Yeah, so Martin has pushed very hard in the middle. Um, yeah, so, that, that's a that's a good spot to get across there, but under those uh, retaining walls. Yep. Yeah. You know, you, which what you got to do, I think. You gotta get some guys in the upper levels across the street to shoot at them. Yeah, 
Yeah, I got I, I had people in the upper levels, but they got um, they got the OBA. Yeah, oh, they, yeah the no, pretty no, successful no. OBA. Um, I see that the one you got the one down there still, right? The spotting round. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, that's that all going to come stack. off. That'll all come off now. Um, obviously, this is the end yeah. of the end of the the morning. It's the end of the day. You got to go through your refill phase. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So I bought I bought the extra OBA, um, and I bought uh, the weapons company uh, to yeah. give a little bit more uh, oomph. And the, and the OBA did a great job. Um, so yeah. the OBA was very good. And neither of my OBA came down. In fact, both radios malfunctioned and then disabled. Yeah. Oh. Before they were able to come down. Yeah. But so like, you, of course, what it means is I've got them free next date yeah yeah which you know in some respects that's actually good to have that the second day yeah because it's you got to be able to put fire down on them when they're coming across and you know it's like you yeah. know you're playing the french right i i'm the french and, and martin's the germans yeah right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm. so well you got you got your guys you're in good shape i like i like that in the middle you know, the, the guys that we've seen play it have all gone in the south heavy. Right. Mm. Two, the, the two brothers that are playing. Yeah. yeah. The one guy, he just landed everything down south. He didn't even uh, try to go up in the middle or in the north. You know? so, so we had a practice run, and Martin dropped on the on our practice run, he dropped his bombardment uh, in the south, and it just yeah. caused mayhem. And he started yeah. to push in the south. And we said, okay, we played the first three turns, and then we said, okay, we'll start again because we wanted to just see how, how it flowed. Yeah. And so I had a very similar setup, but just spread out a little bit more. And this time yeah. Martin went heavy in the middle, but the bombardment did nothing. I mean, it was almost completely ineffective, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely, it was, yeah. it was. It was awful. Yeah. Um, well, you see, the thing now is, if uh, you've got a good, you, you're strong in the south, he's not going to be able to really land anything there. Right. He can push across in the center, and if he slides off, and he's got those guys coming in, uh, what the heck is that? Just, just below the, the northern reentrant, you got some guys in there. Yeah, it looks like in a house in the building with a radio next to it. Right. Yeah. If you can like push those guys up that that road there, that's 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 a big mm. a big chunk in the French because they got to decide then with their reinforcements do they want to come mm. in the middle. Or bring it down, you know, if yeah. you go to either end. If you get some guys coming off in the north edge, mm. I don't know what you bought for your second day's um, reinforcements. Yeah. So, but, Martin, have you made your purchases already? You uh, no, I, uh, I've, I've got a pretty good idea where I'm going to get, but I haven't made right. my purchases okay. yet. Well, you, for this turn, you should have made it already. I, I've made mine already. The French, the French have already made yeah. theirs. I, I'm German. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. The French guy, he should, he should have made his ready. Yeah, I, I have made mine. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you have to decide what you're going to do. And if you've got infantry, they're not going to really be in the fight for half of the scenario next That's time. right. Yeah. Because they'll be walking across the map. Yep. Uh, yep. If you've got some kind of vehicles, they can scream up there and reinforce where they need it. But, yeah. you know, that's why the center is so so crucial to this. If you can get it across in the center, you can go to either re entrant right. or you can climb the cliffs. Yeah. So Martin, you climb Martin, the cliffs. If you if you can clear an area where he can't shoot at you, and you can mm. climb the cliffs, yeah, get up on the top there. It, yeah. The French position on the river really goes downhill fast. That's mm. right. Because he's got to start getting guys up those reentrants. Because if you can get guys on the cliffs looking down into the reentrants, nobody's coming back off of the, the river. Exactly. So Martin's yeah. got one squad up on the cliffs. I, I managed to get one and a half up. Um, yeah. And. I managed to, to to kill one in close combat, and now it's it's kind of surrounded. And obviously, yeah, I get the I first that. I get the first turn. Um, and we were just saying that uh, you know Carl's done a great job because Carl kind of drew our uh, perimeter for us, and also uh, we we right. marked this guy as supply. But it's just the strategic locations, if I'm not correct, right? That's right. Yeah. You can trace your supply through the cliffs. Yeah. Yeah, but, so I don't know why I don't know why this he's marked this as sort of supply shortage, but but Carl marked that for us as. A I think what he was what he, the reason is that it, the two hexes that I've got to trace my supply through HH twenty seven and HH twenty eight, he doesn't know who controls those, but actually you can oh, okay. control yeah. those. I think Dave controls those because uh, I climbed the cliff from HH twenty six. Right. All right. Yeah. So yeah. actually. 
doesn't have a it, yeah he doesn't really have a, a, a route of first supply right okay okay um, and what, what does the effect have the supply shortage? Does that does that have any kind of meaningful effect in it? Uh, no, not really. It's like uh, ammo shortage. Right. right. Okay. Okay. So I'm kind of hoping that they'll be close combated out of the out of the game. Uh, well, they're not jumping in there, are you? Uh, I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I, I think I need to get him off the. I think so. Well, you know, it's, it looks like he's right next to your trench, there. That's got to be somewhat important. Yeah, so there's there's a there's a little two two there's a two two eight in the trench. My two two eight, um, Martin knows there's a two three seven um, concealed in FF twenty seven, yeah. and there's another crew just below them, obviously. So, so I kind of yeah. think with a with a three to two, yeah, three to two, I can probably get the ambush there as well. Um, uh, yeah, there was a gun in that trench, but um, yeah. I captured it and destroyed it. So, yeah, yeah. and in terms of. That's- Casualty points we've got. I think I've I've got I think about forty eight casualty points. And I think Martin's got about twenty seven, um, uh-huh. but he's got a bunch of prisoners as well that we haven't counted. Um, yeah, that's dead, dead. such a pain. But you know, you, you jump into close combat. The people are always jumping into close combat with them, and it's like, what are you doing to your prisoner? No, yeah. you can't. You want yeah, to massacre him, but you can't. You know? That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know that. <laughs> I actually took um, a few back across to the other side of the river, particularly the 9-2, because I captured a 9-2, didn't I? 9-1, uh, yeah. Nine one. Oh, it was a 9-1, but he was he was your best leader, wasn't he? He and was, I, yep, yep. I kind of didn't want him accidentally, especially as the bridgehead was so precarious at the beginning. Yep. I, yeah. I didn't want to lose him. The crazy thing is that you, you rely on these boats to get across on yeah. this campaign game date, and, of course, you, you lose them at a pretty steady rate, don't oh. you? Yeah, yeah. This, and, and, you had another company you could buy, I think, right? Yeah, you can buy them. I didn't buy any in the first date. Um, you know, that may have been a mistake. Um, but it um, it means now that until until I get, like, um, a ferry going or uh, and, and some bridges going, you know, it's kind of sort of slow down the, the rate that I can move things across that river. That's the yeah. key thing, isn't it? It's the key thing of this campaign. It's very, it's very key because you got to keep things flowing across the river you know yeah. the, the big thing you want to do it i think first is is build a ferry mm. you know then yeah. you can get something moving across you throw a tank on there and yeah. if you get a tank on the other side of the river it's big yeah, yeah, yeah. now martin's got a good story to tell about both of his tanks <laughs> oh well, i made a design so i i bought those it was a terrible mistake the six wasn't it you bought the six i bought the assault guns yeah yeah um, and uh, yeah, they wouldn't. They weren't a good purchase anyway, and, uh, and I used them disastrously. One got hit by the sniper. To be fair, and was recalled. I suppose I wasn't completely in control of that. Yeah. Um, but the other one moved in front of your uh, pillbox with your um, little infantry gun, the thirty-seven yeah. meter infantry gun that, uh, that destroyed it. Yeah. And you, I mean, you forgot to bring them on as well for a couple of turns, and then you yeah. kind of didn't know what to do with them, and then they had no line of sight. I kind of wanted, knew what I wanted to do, but I, I, I realised how vulnerable they were. You know, they've got a very big gun on them, haven't they? And I thought it might clear you out of a building or something, a key building, or smoke you, because mm. they've got quite good smoke. Right. So um, I guess I guess one question is then is is if you if you think that um, Martin's made really good progress or just like average progress or like how how well do you think the Germans done? So he's got um, he's got definitely uh, what's was it was it about twenty. 29 points I think was it 29, 29 points yeah 29 CVP yeah. across the yeah. across the river <clears throat> um, yeah well he's got he's got a goodly amount of people for this for this scenario he's uh, he's got he's got enough people across that he doesn't have to really you know freak out about it. he's got a good perimeter set up he's got some Places that he can get people into as soon as he gets across. Right. He's going to have to get up into the woods by that middle road. Yep. Uh, right. Yeah. Is there anything in that pillbox up north there? Uh, so in the very top north, in the very north pillbox, there's nothing there. Um, okay. In the the one near the um, the broken pier, there's the um, four five seven with an infantry gun. Um, okay. But yeah, nothing nothing right at the top. Yeah, you know, if he can get, if he can get to that middle road in this next scenario, 
mm. or the southern or the northern road. If you got anything you can throw across up north, it doesn't look like you have anything up there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, if you can spread him out, the more you can spread him out, Martin, the better yeah. you are. You, know, yeah. you don't want to let him concentrate on top of the cliffs on you. Yeah. Because that can be tough. If you can get to the cliff base yeah. and clear out around you, like you're, you're in good shape for the second scenario. Yeah, yeah. Let's say you, you average across the river. Mm. Most people, this first scenario is very difficult to get across and organized. You, yeah. you know, you've, you've done a pretty decent job there. Like I said, getting to the bottom of those, uh, uh, the retaining wall. Yep. That's like, you know, it's the same thing as getting to the, uh, the railroad up north. Mm. You get to the rail embankment, right. you can hide behind it and rally. Yeah. You know, if you clear the guys out, they can shoot at you. You, can, you, got, a, you got a good base there. You can go up. The Germans can always climb up stuff. That's the yeah. one thing I remember. Yeah. 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 You know, it's like people tend to like think they got to go up the roads. You got to go up the roads. If you get infantry squads at the base of a cliff and they climb up that cliff, and they get up there and there's a leader with them. That's like powerful. If you, get a, if you can get three squads up on top of that cliff hmm. in the next scenario, you'll be in pretty good shape. You know, yeah. three or four squads because then you get into the afternoon, late afternoon scenario, and you can, you know, when the low visibility comes back, it'll give right. you a chance again to push. Yeah. You know, you get like three turns, I think, of low visibility in the evening. And just before nightfall, you can really make some hay with that. I mean, you can jump into close combat because you'll have guys across the river and you're going to have like 25, 30 squads across the river, maybe yeah. a tank or two. And mm. you can, you know, the French, if you buy the H-35s, if you buy those little four armor factor things, mm. they have a two-factor machine gun and a, I think it's a 40, 37 millimeter gun in them. Yeah. They really, they, they can't really... Do anything serious, but they can stop the Germans from coming up one of the reentrants with a two factor machine gun in a cannon. Uh, I always mouthed them now. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of mouthing like, going on. Oh man, I was like, I I think I had like, I bought a platoon for the one the one campaign game I played. I bought a platoon of them, I brought them up and I put them in the south reentrant, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna stuff them with this. And I fired the three guns. Three consecutive shots, I rolled three twelves and mouthed them, all three of them. <laughs> and over the next two turns, I recalled them. Right, right. So they were gone. It was like they, they didn't fire a shot. They didn't do anything. They just like, turned around and drove off the board. It was like they platoon moved off the board. <laughs> just yeah. like that. That's crazy. My mortars have been a little bit like that. I, I, I was doing really well with my mortars, and then suddenly one turn, I broke every one of them and then mouthed yeah. every one the of them. The mortars could be deadly, and yeah. it's shooting across... They, you get some long range shots with those mortars, and you yeah. don't think, you know, 81 millimeter mortar or 25 hex is like, you know, what are you going to do with that? Yeah. And it's like, you can hurt the guy with that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, Germans. Yeah. Where'd you put your guns? Did Rommel come on yet? So Rommel is on. Martin, you want to talk yes. about Rommel? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he, he, he came on turn five, and he's, um, um, I'm not sure if Dave knows where he is, but he's around. Uh, He's at near the edge of the water around sort of PP26, oh, yeah, yeah. or PP26 kind of area, kind of near that big minus one leader. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's one of the buildings behind that, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, when he comes on and he starts getting the guys motivated. Yeah. You know, you can get the assault engineers, if you can clear an area for them, but they're not getting shot to hell, they yeah. can just throw a ferry in the water first. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's, you get to call that, that's a little bit easier than building a bridge. You don't have to go yeah. through the construction. You just put it down and the ferry basically floats and you drive a tank on it. And mm. off it goes. You, know, you turn yeah. it into a ferry. You can take one every couple of turns kind of thing. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I, got, I, the, I played the campaign game like four times. I played twice as the Germans, twice as the French. And both times as the Germans, I got two ferries going. Mm. And that helped me through that scenario just to get tanks across and some infantry because you can throw a tank and some infantry on the ferry and drive it across if it's a 16 ton. Yeah. And, you know, you get a couple of those 38Ts across there or, you know, even a Panzer four. 
you know, yeah. Yeah. That that's like you can smoke things then. Yeah. You know, you got your Panzer IV's got your smoking. You can. They're proper tanks, aren't they? The Panzer IVs, if you can get them across, they got good machine guns. They got a good, right. they've got a good gun, haven't they? Got an eight. Uh, you know, you know twelve eight machine guns. You can drive up next to a building yeah. with a French guy and fire an eight up three at him. And, yeah. yeah, it's 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 helpful. You know, yeah. you just gotta be careful with them. You know, you don't want to get them jumped on with the French if they yeah. pass the seventeen patsies that they need to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so right. they got plenty of infantry around them. They they should be all right, shouldn't they? We have got a blaze. You warned us about having blazes on the east side. I've got a blaze on the east side. Where? Um, SS20. SS21. Yeah. yeah. SS21 is, is a, blaze, a building, a blaze. Now, it's not connected to the terrain around it, so with a little bit of luck... You've got the row house. The, the row house is... It could spread to the row house, yeah. 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 SS21. Uh, so it's yeah. up, up near his um, burnt out tank in yeah. uh, on the Oh yeah, yeah, I see that, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's not really it's not really in the in the way up there. But that no. if that catches fire to those woods there, that's yeah. gonna put a stop to that road coming down there. Yeah. And you know, you, you wanna stop it's a full ball blaze though, so there's nothing yeah. you can do with it. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, it's a blaze still. You can still put it out, right? No, um, you can't put a blaze out. I don't think so. I think the flame flames can be put out. Yeah, not blazes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you're basically screwed with that. It's going to set the woods on fire. <laughs> Unless it goes out in the refit phase. Yeah, it's it didn't. It's a chance it will go out in the refit phase. Okay, okay. We'll have to check that, but yeah. yeah I think, I think we, ro we rolled for spread on it, don't we? And, and it didn't. I think is it double one, it goes out or something, I think is the... I think it was a flame at the beginning of the refit phase. Yeah, and it was it's double six. <laughs> From gusts, didn't it? That's right. And then we got a double yeah. six to turn it into a flight, a blaze. We had a double six. That's right. We rolled a double six, which turned it to a blaze. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, got to hope next refit phase, it'll, they all go out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's their chance. What will happen is it'll probably, if it spreads to three or four hexes, yeah. you'll probably have like one or two of them will go out. And you just yeah. hope it's the ones that, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think... I think it's not the worst place because the the upper road there's there's a road just below it, isn't there, which can you can yeah, use yeah. instead. So, and and it's that building isn't connected to the woods, so that's uh, that adds to, doesn't it, to the dice roll or subtracts yeah, to so the dice roll. Is, yeah. yeah, yeah. So a little bit of luck, it'll be all right. <laughs> the thing is, if it you know if it catches and it starts running up through the row houses, it gets into the yeah, we 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 had to change the wind thing because we, yeah. we had a couple guys play it and the wind went to high, mm. you know, and it, it was like blowing like yeah. it's like a, you know plus two on every one you know <laughs> thing it was like oh, I have a picture of the map that like I, I'll send it to you it, <laughs> with the whole thing in flames like the yeah. north re-entrant is like every house is burning the south yeah. re-entrant has fires at the end of it. Mm -hmm. it, it down, down on the riverside where the French are on, on their side, from the college all the way down to the south edge of the map, every building was burned out. Oh, it's like, you know, it was incredible. <laughs> Just, <laughs> all right. But, well, um, yeah, it, you know, you guys with the, with the reinforcement groups that you got to buy now, yep. uh, as the Germans, I would think you probably need to get some boats up there. You're going to need more boats and, you know, uh, as yeah. the French... Just try to get units up there for the next, you know, the next scenario that they're heading for the areas you think. Like, you, you're looking at him. He's going to try that middle road. Yep. Um, I don't think he's going to try to go south. I wouldn't try to go south if I was him. Because that looks like there's a ton of people waiting yep. along the river there. Yeah. You know, so I, if I was going to try anything with those boats, with that second thing of boats, I'd bring them down by the flames over there. And right. try something up in the north or the center north, you know. Right, right. That would be where I'd be looking to go because if you can get across by the pillbox there. Yeah. Um, and and you do know, you think you can, do you think as the French, they should be trying to hold a line or are they are they trying to pull back at this point? What, what do you think? The at the this strategy? point, you know, you can try to encapsulate them. I would think as the French, you know, you got you seem to have enough in the south to to stuff them there. Mm. 
You know, so I would, you got to keep the guys on the on the river a little bit longer. But I would pull some of them out and pull put them in the houses below the cliffs, but up in the row houses there that are empty there. Right, right. I I I, I get some people in those houses there, and I try to get some more people up on top of the cliffs. Right. You know, because you gotta you gotta get people on top of those cliffs because if he starts to outnumber you on the top of the cliff, you're in big trouble. Right, if you right. can get those guys to he's got that little beachhead there. Yeah. Up the retaining wall and through your guys and up in the cliffs there, you're gonna have a problem. You know? Now, I don't know if you noticed, Martin has also been making good use of the weir and has been marching guys across I saw uh, that, yeah. It's uh And he's he's done okay. I've got two squads across so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and it's you know, if you get people across in that area there, that's that's a big area because you get uh, you got one shell hole there, so you blew something up. Yep, yep. Uh, is that where your artillery hit up there? That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think that yeah. shell hole was the only effect of the. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Much. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, um, that's yeah. uh, that's he's he looks like he's in pretty good shape up there. Though. Is that? Uh, the radio that's laying in, is that, that's a French radio, right? That's a French radio, yep, yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was the remnants of a, a large melee that that eventually was uh, went the Martins' way. But, uh, the but you can get some, strange, you can get some strange events in this thing, can't you? Yeah. Absolutely. With the melees and yep. everything. Yeah, we Actually, can. Something I've never done before, if in um, JJ29, I've got some escaped prisoners. They're my... Uh, they're, they're my my troops. They didn't get rearmed when they escaped, but they were able to pick up that medium machine gun. So they're manning that. JJ twenty oh, okay. nine. You see the medium machine gun? There's a that's a escape yeah, French prisoner. medium machine gun. Yeah. Yeah. French medium. Machine. So the the guy oh, yeah, just okay. just to the southeast of the supply shortage. Yeah. 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 He's like that's three hectares below the uh, the shell hole. That's, that's right. right. Yep. It's a, it's a first for me, I think, that I've uh, I've done that. Yeah. See that now? That's that's something you, that's going to help you along the cliff face. Like yeah. If you yeah. use anybody up along the cliff face, you can you can vaporize them. You know, and yeah. that's, that's part of the French problem is Germans getting to the base of the cliff and having some more guys behind them, and even mm. across the river in the upper levels that are yeah. shooting. Oh. At that cliff face, you, you can peel the, you can peel the French away as soon as they put people there. Yeah, um, yeah. I used a little with my trenches. I made like little triangles. Two guys on two trenches on the cliff, and one behind them, so that if they broke, they would just rally back to the trench. Yeah. You know, and they won't, couldn't get shot at because you can't see anything beyond the front of that cliff. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's a weird it's a weird thing. It's only a little area. On the whole cliff front, where you can see the river from mm. not standing on the edge of the cliff. Yeah. You know, this uh, the thing by the, the Chateau de May up here, the uh, the wooden building that's the equestrian yeah. stable. Yep. Um, that area there, you can't see anything off the cliffs. Right. You mm. know, like if you're standing on the other side, even in the citadel, you can't see beyond the cliff face. It, there's, there's just tall trees there, and the brush is just. You know, it's it's like eight, ten feet high, and you can't see anything past it. But there's one area that, uh, right next to that, that, it's cleared. For some reason, they cleared it out, and you can see across the river and up the river. It's a it's a good place uh, to have somebody dug in. Right. You know? Okay. You guys left it open. Uh, that's fine, but it, it's you know that's one of the few areas that you can see both ways on the cliffs, right? From the cliffs, right? Yeah, I'm trying to see what number it is, but this isn't. Uh, it's it's like three hexes south of the road where it goes up onto the top of the plateau. Oh yeah. So he's like talking about FF. Is it FF twenty four? Are you looking at? Or? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Looks like it. It's uh, there's two clear hexes on yep. the front of the cliff. I yep. see. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that's one of the areas that you can see down because you know damn trees if they're uh, at the level below it plateaus you. You know, right. there's a lot of areas where the trees are right below you, so you're safe on them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You got that whole section of the cliff there. It's where well, you got the two trenches connected that there's nobody in. 
That's right, yep. It moves on the end like this, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, again, that was another yeah. gun. The French, the French, you're, you're not in bad shape, but you got to got to defend the ways up the cliff. Right. You know, that little path up there, don't let somebody sneak up that on you. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the middle of the road here, he's got he's got some good good ways to get into the woods there. Yeah. Right at middle road. Right. And right. you can go also go up. Uh, I, I I would try to get somebody in the north if you can drive some boats up that way. Yeah. You know, as as those boats go back, hang them up north. If you have infantry coming in next time, bring them up to the north and see if you can get them across up there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what your board is reinforcements. So I'll let you guys keep your secrets. You know? Sure, sure. Yeah, Martin, I don't think Martin's bought them yet, so... Uh, um, I've got so a pretty I, good idea, one. but I haven't I haven't actually bought them yet, so, uh, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, I, I don't you, think it's a surprise. You've got a lot me. of options here. You're yeah. in the centre. So There's a lot, lot of options. Out. Yeah, yeah. All I right, need more... Well, I've lost a lot of infantry, but... Um, but, yeah, anyway, Dave, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah, so, mm. Dan, Dan, thank you very much for that. I mean, we really appreciate your time. Um, mm. We're, we're yeah, having a great sorry time. I screwed it up there, made you guys work to get me. No, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely silly. Um, we've said that Carl's doing a great job as well, helping us out. So Carl's yeah. um, Carl is Carl is the guru on this. Yeah. The, yeah. The, this campaign game was his idea. I, I mean, I helped him throughout it. We were talking back and forth. We got rid of seventy trucks that would have out right. there. Uh, the Opal Blitz package that you got yeah. with the Boy to Gear. That was the, the remnant of that. We, we had that like times three. Right, right. Like every unit that came on had a truck with it. Okay. And the traffic jams were just, you know, we, yeah. we were like going out of our mind. And we told Perry oh, really, oh. would never, never acquiesce to putting that many Opal Blitzes in the mix. Oh. And, well, um, we're definitely having a good time. And, and I think what we're really enjoying is that there's, there's it's like three or four scenarios into one, isn't it? Because there's little, little areas that kind of you fight over and then you come back to another area. And they're so different now. Like it's it's uh, it's been very interesting. Yeah, well, it's, it's 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 interesting in the fact that like you have to get the crossing. You know, you got to as the German, you have to secure the crossing and get your your beachhead set up and get the bridges built and get a couple of tanks across. And you you got that early bridge building thing. And now you're going to get into a period with the, this scenario where you got to push out of that. And you get yep. into this city fighting almost. Uh, uh. Yep. yep. Exactly, and then it comes out of that, and it'll go into an armor battle at yeah. long range. You have to have like long range stuff, you know. Uh-huh. Even the thirty-seven splat guns are considered long range at this time of the war. But you start fighting to get off the board mm. as the Germans and as the French. Uh-huh. You're trying to stop them along this forty hex front that you don't have the, the, the troops to stop them. Right. You know, right. you're going to have to figure out a way to. You know, do you want to try to stop them from getting the number off the board, or do you want to let them get the number off the board and shoot yeah. up the road behind them that day so they don't get their points? You know, it's 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 a it's a tricky contest because a lot of guys never played anything that connects like that. Right. Yeah. I mean, Paul has this that it connects so seamlessly. You just you start to go into the next phase and you don't even realize that right. you know it's a change. You know. Yeah, because we we were talking about the fact that like even the DM counters don't come off between campaign dates. Um, right. So it's you yeah. know it's really it, it's, it's almost it's actually like one scenario. Yeah, you know, yeah, like exactly. It's, but it, it, like everybody stops and takes a breath and then just jumps back into it again. You know, mm-hmm. it, if you don't keep that in mind, that you're not going to have these guys to move around at the end of the campaign. Like most right. people play these campaign games, at the end of the campaign day, you can move around and re reposition your guys. Yeah. And uh, with, with this, you, you don't get that. You know, you yeah. guys are staying where they are, and they're just starting to fight again. And right, right, it's, right. Uh, it, I, it's an amazing campaign game. I mean, I enjoyed this so much playing this, and it's yeah. fun watching people play it. You know, good I mean, like you guys, two good players playing it. <laughs> I, I don't think so. Your, your eyes are now going. Two, two players, yeah. Yeah, two players. We'll take no, that. No, no, you guys, you guys are good players. I mean, you've been doing this a long time. I mean, you're, not, yeah. you're not guys that just picked up the starter kit sure. and decided to play. Yeah, yeah, games. absolutely. You know, yeah. I mean, That's it's, true. It's, it's different. You know, I mean, if you get guys that are new to the hobby, they're, they're enthusiastic, but they're not looking at the the nuances of, you know, like yeah. getting a boat across the river. You know, right. like it's. Yeah. It's different if you're trying to do it and you realize that the guy that's playing against you, if you do this, he's going to hit you with a heavy machine gun shot. Yeah. 
He's not going to waste that heavy machine gun shot at a guy, a half squad running 17 hexes away. (laughs) You know, it's going to wait for you to load those three boats up and try to cross the river. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a different game with two with two experienced players playing. Let's put that way. Martin doesn't care. He's still walking across the weir. He doesn't care. (laughs) (laughs) And and the thing is, he's just impressed as hell as he's doing that. Well, the thing is. He's able to now because if he breaks on that um, that second hex, he's able to route across now. So actually, right. it kind of almost helps him away. And I can't. I can't exactly see what happened. Yeah, the, uh, one of the squads got across broken. Yeah, but but you know he's rallied now and he's in that fire group, but just yeah. next to the. Yeah. Have you had anybody fall in yet? No, we've no, <laughs> no, no drifting either. Is there? There's been no drifting. Um, no. So, no. Well, the boats can drift. The, the boats can drift if they're out in the river at the end of their movement. They well, can, it, it seems like it's only the turn after they launch, I think. So, mm-hmm. so I don't, I don't know if they've been. Mm. Martin, I don't, I mean, you tell me, but I think every time you've launched them. Yeah. Um, that's what I thought was the rule, but uh, maybe that's something we should double check. Yeah. But, uh, I, I believe the turn that the turn that I launch them, they don't drift. Right. They only drift in my turn because it's only a mild, you know, a light, a current. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's uh, the turn, like if you get stuck in the river, if you get like broken or pinned in the river on the right. boat, you can drift. Okay. But okay. if you know, if you if you get across it the next turn, you're not going to drift. Yeah. He seems to have done okay yeah. on that. But um, yeah, it's like, it's not been like um, old Gavin's Gamble where... There were boats no, no. flying off everywhere. It's yeah, the boats just screaming down the river like they got motors on them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This all is, right. you know, this is... It's gone. All right, I'll let you guys go. No, 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 sorry, I didn't, want to, yeah, I didn't want to... So I was just no, going to say, yeah. It's just, it's, 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 it's... The boats are a whole different uh, part of the game that don't last long, you know. Right. I mean, it goes on for, like, the one scenario you play. The next scenario, you're not going to really be concerned with the boats because you'll have your area that they can cross... He's not going to be able to shoot at it, so you'll be able to get boats moving across. The you know back and forth will be uh, a lot smoother for you than right. this time right. you know, because he's not going to have guys sitting right on the shoreline with the medium machine guns staring you up. Yeah, exactly. And if you get some water there, you might hit a couple of them. But you know, if you get another boat company down in there, you can really make hay getting guys across between the boats and a couple of ferries you'll have tanks and stuff across and it becomes a whole different game then yeah yep. you know he's gotta he's gotta deal with tanks you know and the 38t they got that eight machine gun they can mm-hmm. drive up to a place and you know just clean out you get two or three of them driving up to the place and you know, they can't be you can't bypass sleaze them but yeah yeah you know yep. there's other things you can do you know exactly Exactly. Uh, I'll let you guys go. And, Thank you, Dan. Uh, we really appreciate your... Uh, here for the yeah. Next time you can get Carl and have somebody that really knows what they're <laughs> talking about. Well, listen, you're both, you're both leagues ahead of us, so um, any, any input is, uh, is really appreciated. So, so thanks okay. for your time. And, uh, I love the fact that you guys are doing this, man, and thank you, and uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And again, I'm sorry I screwed up at the beginning, but I spent three hours here last night trying to get that damn file to work. That's no problem. Don't worry about that. It's not a problem at all. Um, Dan, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we'll, we'll stay in touch, yep? Yep, yep. All right. Have thanks, a good Dan. day. Cheers. Bye-bye. Okay, so that's, that's Dan's thoughts. Uh, it's always good to talk to Dan, and uh, I like his stories. <laughs> his marine stories are... <laughs> That's excellent. Um, so we should mention and give a good shout out to, to Carl. Um, I think we joked at the start of one of these um, episodes about having someone like Klaus to be on hand to answer rules queries. Um, obviously, you know, we, <laughs> we're kind of joking. Well, we've had Carl actually draw our perimeters for us. So <laughs> Carl's the designer of the non. And has, he's uh, he's been answering well, questions real time virtually by email. Hasn't absolutely. Yeah, exactly. He's been brilliant. Um, and to be fair... <laughs> Are you avoiding saying his surname for some reason? Which, which surname was that, Martin? Carl um, <laughs> Nagiva. <laughs> that's that's the worst time. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, we don't know how to say your surname, Carl. We're gonna we're gonna get him on. We'll definitely get him on um, next time. Yeah. We'll get him on, yeah. Yeah. and uh, we will we will have a chat to him uh, about how how this is going as well. Um, I mean, we're, we're loving the campaign. It's, it's been brilliant, and um, you know, if you haven't played this campaign, I think it's definitely worth if you've got the space and the time or. Very, very remarkable game, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, but Carl's been brilliant answering questions. And to be fair, I think we've we've only had really one question that we couldn't really answer that the rules didn't really weren't clear about, which I think was the mm. whether cliffs are entrable locations from 
from supply point of view. But other than that, the, the rules are really quite clear. And um, I think the questions that we've asked, you know, Carl's been able to very quickly point out where we could have got the answers from if we hadn't just tried the, the shortcut of asking to Carl what they were. So um, that has been really good. I think we may have some trouble with pulleys, ferries, and bridges. I'm going to have any trouble with that. <laughs> You're so, so by that I read I can pretty much do what I like as long as I sound confident you'll just accept that <laughs> oh look one term my bridge is in position yeah. do you know what I don't even think I'll have a line of sight to your pulleys or your bridges so <laughs> I'm afraid you're pulling back so quickly but um, yeah I might check every now and again but yeah, in general, yeah. you'll be okay it looks good yeah. yeah, absolutely. So um, we're going to catch up next time on the uh, the tournaments. So our first round of our tournament, we'll, we'll do a, a catch up on that. I'm um, looking yeah. forward to seeing your log file again, Martin. So thanks for that. And <laughs> and until then, um, yeah. anything else going on, Martin? We're not going to do. We were going to do top five contributions or contributors. We're, we're going to work on that. I yeah, that that needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of work. Some, some people have done some amazing things. When you actually stop and look at it, it's incredible what people have offered to the to the yeah, hobby. Exactly. So so we can't just do a top five and then that's that. So we're no. going to spend some time trying to figure out some categories and, and do it all properly. Yeah. And um, then that, what we're going to say so that people that we miss out <laughs> don't feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give them a participation award or something. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah right. absolutely. Or well, I think maybe we won't do this. But yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right well martin thanks very much for your time and uh looking forward to episode 28 we're going to get through probably half of the next campaign day so we'll do the we'll do the wrap up of the tournaments and then uh next time we'll do the the next campaign all right so take until care. then take care bye and bye, -bye. The dog here, I gotta get her in the house. All right, all right, thank you. My German shepherd, <laughs> my son brought her over here for a day a couple of years, years ago while he was moving. He said, Keep an eye on the dog for a day, <laughs> four years, and a four thousand dollar fence later. To be fair, Dan, it's, it's better than you've done with the uh, the Marines that you were losing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.